before I start talking about exercise one, I want to just explain that you really should be able to do this exercise on your own. But for all of the exercises in this course, I'm actually going to walk you through the entire procedure. So this walkthrough here is just to introduce how you could do this on your own without having to actually watch the video. But if you really don't want to get a piano and you really don't care about learning piano skills, which I'll talk about in a moment, then you can just go ahead and watch this once so you understand the process and then go through the guided exercises because I will be doing these exercises for you. But there is a benefit to trying to do these exercises at least once on the piano because if you can slowly develop piano skills, there's just so much you can do with music theory and ear training when you know your way around the piano. And you don't have to be fast, but you should know your way around the piano. So that being said, that's my caution. You can go ahead and watch this walkthrough, and then I will actually guide you through exercise 1.1 through the remaining exercises in this section. Let's go over the practice procedure for exercise 1.1. So what you want to do is get your piano keyboard, and I'm going to walk you through this, and you want to sit in the middle of it. Reach your right hand out and look for the white key to the left of the double set of black keys. So notice how there's a set of two, and then there's three, and then two and it repeats in a pattern of two and three. This is actually the way that you find middle C because to the left of the double set of black keys is middle C. So reach out and just touch that note now if you have a piano keyboard. Should sound like that. Now, if we go from white key to white key, the next note up here, that is a D. And now we go to E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So the notes that are listed here are the notes we're going to be focusing on for this particular exercise. We're trying to get you acquainted with the piano keyboard. So you can use this keyboard as a guide to complete the first exercise. Let's go over the practice procedure for identifying the notes of the treble clef. So what we have here is our piano keyboard, which you can download and blow up so that it's bigger and you can have it as a reference. You can put it right in front of you on the keyboard. First, you're gonna to go to day one and you're gonna say, okay, my first note in this measure, this is called a measure. It's a distance between the start of the bar line here and where you see this little line here. This is all one measure. This would be the second measure. So we can number them. We could call this measure one, this measure two. But what we're focused on right now is finding where the C is on the keyboard. So we know it's not middle C because we see here this C is also on the third space of the system. So we match those up and we say, okay, so if my middle C is directly in front of me when I'm standing in the middle of the keyboard, that's right here. The next time I see a double set of black keys, I go all the way up to D, E, F, G, A, B. This is my C. So I find my C and then I find my next note. It's a D. So here's C, here's D. So what I do is now I name and I play the note. So I've got my C, I say C, and then I play the note. Just casually play it on your piano. Then repeat it and listen a few times. Repeat the note in a relaxed and curious manner. Focus on listening to the note and enjoy the experience of hearing it in great detail. Avoid the temptation to describe the note. Just listen to it. Your next step is after a few repetitions, you move on to the next note and you follow the same procedure. So now I find where my D is and I realize this D here matches 
with this D here. So it's right in the middle of the double set of black keys. So I say D and then I play the note, D. I listen to it for a few moments and then I say it again, D. Listen for a few moments and say it again, D. Once you feel comfortable, you know where that C is on the staff and this D, then you can randomize the notes for the remaining time. Once you've played all the notes for the current day in order, you just randomly select from the available notes and continue to identify and play them with your allotted time. If a particular note calls to you, feel free to spend more time with it and focus on its sound. So I'm going to do an example of this for about a minute, but you'll do it for a full seven minutes. In just a moment, I want to give you some more information. So if you would like to spend more time on this assignment, you can, but never spend more than 15 minutes because the ear tires quickly and will stop hearing the differences between the notes. Remember, you are not describing them, but if you are hearing differences between notes, a good rule of thumb is to stop practicing the moment the notes start sounding the same. Do not rush this exercise. Take your time and get into the notes. Don't worry about whether you can hear any differences. Remember, you should also avoid trying to describe or label these notes. I've said this multiple times because you do not want to describe them. You don't want to say, oh, this is soft, this one's bright, this one's dull. Just compare them. And if you don't know the names of the notes, make sure you state each note out loud before playing the note. So if we were to go through this process, Together, I'm going to show you how to do this with about a minute of our time. All right, so let's go through the process. You set your timer for seven minutes. You find the two notes. You find your C and your D. Now, you start with C. You name and play the note. So I say C. I just listen to it, I close my eyes even, I just listen to it. C. C. Make it like a meditation. C. Just appreciate that sound that's changing the atmosphere of the air. C. So I played it a few times. Now I go ahead and go on to the next note. D. 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 Okay, I've done that for a few times. I feel comfortable with it. Now I just pick a note that I want to listen to randomly. Close my eyes and I just play it. And then I name it. C. Listen to another note. D. C. C. Am I noticing any small difference between C and D? I don't describe it, I just say yes or no. D. I go back to C, see, because I think I heard something. Let's go back to C and see if I actually heard it. Yeah, C sounds different to me, or maybe it doesn't sound different to you, and that's okay, you keep doing this. So you do that for day one seven minutes. Then on day two, another seven minutes, you now have three notes. 
On day three, you get four. On four, you get five. On five, you get six. And we keep adding more notes until you are playing all the notes in the treble clef. You're naming them and you're playing them on the piano. So while you're doing this, make sure you're looking at the music and recognizing that on day one, that is a C above middle C, and this is a D above the D right next to middle C. If you do this, whether you're beginning or advanced, the beginning students will get two benefits. They'll learn the names of the notes and they'll start to understand that notes have slightly different qualities depending on where they're placed in the staff system. If you're advanced, you'll get the second benefit. You will start to hear a subtle difference between the C's, the D's, the E's, all the notes that we have. You're gonna to start to recognize these colors of these tones. It's not gonna give you perfect pitch, but what it will do is open up your ears so you can hear more in music. Now for a select few of you, you may develop perfect pitch from this. I find that about 25% of my students do develop perfect pitch from completing these exercises, but that is not the norm. So don't expect it and don't even aim for it. You don't need perfect pitch. What you need is pitch recognition and pitch discrimination to where I play this note. And you can just say, yeah, that other one's different. I don't need to describe it. You just know there's some subtle difference. That is stage one, just noticing there's a difference. The moment you try and describe it, it's gone. The moment you just try and describe a pitch, you will lose it. So don't try and describe the pitch. That's my advice to you. So work on this exercise for eight days, and then I will see you for the next exercise.